Welcome back. Today's lecture is devoted to Brouwer equivariant degree. It will be an introduction to this concept. So let me write the title and uh, so this will be Brouwer. equivariant degree. And let's recall. So, so recall that for you for V being an Euclidean space, so I write it down Rn, which is equipped with the Euclidean norm, and and an open bounded set omega, which is contained in V, a continuous map. F from V to V is called a would you get this an omega let me write an omega admissible map if for every x belonging to the boundary, we have here that f of x is not equal to zero. So in such a case, the pair, and this will be f omega, is called admissible so we also use the notation intro also introduced the notation m and i put here v this is the set of all f and omega, those are the all admissible pairs in V, like it is above. And finally, we put it here, M is the union of all this, M, V, so this is union is taken over V, so where V equals Rn are all possible uh, Euclidean space, it's all possible Euclidean space. Then, the Brouwer degree, maybe, maybe write it in red, Brouwer degree, as we discussed it in earlier in this course, is the function is the function and this is the grid that is defined from M to the ring of integer numbers satisfying the properties. So first property is called additivity property. So I just put here additivity. And namely it says that the degree of F on omega is the same as the degree on F and omega one 
plus degree on f and omega 2 where omega 1 intersection omega 2 maybe where is empty set and and write it down f minus 1 of 0 mm, it's not really clear so let me make it nicer f uh oh F minus one of zero intersection omega is contained in omega one union omega two and that one is contained in omega. So that's called the additivity property. The another one was called homotopy property homotopy and it simply tells you that if you have here homotopy of admissible maps means t is a parameter of deformation and this will be omega then the, the value of 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 degree is a constant integer is a constant integer finally there was normalization and we have here the, the degree of identity minus a point A it's omega was equal to 1 if A was a point of omega and 0 if A didn't be to omega bar. So this was three, those are the three properties. There is also existence property that follows existence like some kind of okay, existence And it tells you that if degree of f on omega is different than zero, then there exists an x belonging to omega such that the equation f of x equal to zero has a solution. That's that. This is exactly the solution x has the solution x. So this, those are the properties. And, uh, and uh, let's say what we are interested in is, uh, let's say like this, uh, we would like to show how to generalize this degree into the case when the, me, when the, the, when the function f is equivalent, that means we have certain additional action of a compactly group G and then we would like to define the G equivariant degree, the so-called G equivariant degree. So before we let's say discuss the setting for this particular degree, let me formulate a couple of uh, assumptions. So what do we do here is maybe consider A compactly group so the group is G and then we assume that V that V equals to certain uh, let's say finite dimensional space is a G representation so those are the rep let's say we will be interested in representations of the of this particular group G. So what is the representation? That's a good moment to introduce the definition. I never I didn't talk about the representations yet. Let's say like this a finite dimensional a finite D 
dimensional vector space V. Of course, we can assume that V is a kind of Euclidean space Rn, but and and since the all the norms on the finite dimensional space are equivalent, so this finite dimensional space has certain norm, and it could be Euclidean norm, so it is a topological space. So we say a finite dimensional space is called is called a G representation. So if, first of all, A, V is a G space, so is a G space, is a G space. And the second one, B, that for every G belonging to G, so we have here this, this operator TG, Tg that goes from V to V. So let me recall this Tg on a vector V. It is nothing else than Gv. So this is action of the of the vector of G on V. Mm -hmm. So that's this. This is this oper operator. So Tg maybe like this is a linear linear operator but but since it is invertible so this is a linear isomorphism this is a linear isomorphism and indeed we remember that being a g space means that the inverse for each of those tg exists and the inverse so let me recall recall T G minus one in such a case is exactly T G minus one. So it's indeed invertible. So that's an isomorphism. So in such a case, notice that we get we have the correspondence. And this correspondence is like that. For a G, so this G belongs to G, we can associate this linear operator, linear operator, which is TG, and this is an invertible linear operator, so this TG belongs to the general linear group of V. General linear group of V. So, in such a case, so, we obtain A homomorphism of groups. And it is just simply T that transforms G into, into the GLV. GLV, or you can write it down as a GLNR. Because as we assumed here in the very beginning, V is Rn. So in that case, every linear map can be represented as a matrix. And that's the notation of the group of invertible matrices. So in a certain way, what we are doing, this is a homomorphism. And now that has to be shown that we have here a continuous action on the V, and, and the V is a finite dimensional space in such a case, since V is finite dimensional, since V is finite dimensional, Yes, T is 
continues. And that's a good moment because uh, that's, a, that's a good moment to give you as an exercise the proof of this statement. So, so let's say exercise. And now, let's go further. Since every continuous homomorphism between Lie groups is a Lie group homomorphism. Which implies it is a homomorphism, it is a differentiable map between two manifolds. And here, of course, look, this is a Lie group, and that one is clearly a Lie group because it's an open open set in 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 in, in, in R. This is open set in R n square, so that's a manifold. So it is also a manifold, and 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 in such a case we have here two Lie groups. Continuous homomorphism between these two Lie groups becomes a Lie group homomorphism, which means a smooth map, smooth map fr from G to the G and V. It's a group homomorphism. The map, the map, the, the, let's maybe just simply forget the T is smooth. She is, we will be using it later on. Okay, so now we know that this is the smooth. So, so, okay, actually, we can specify a different, another type of representation. Maybe let's say like this. Another definition. A G representation V, which is okay, Euclidean space Rn, is called orthogonal not nice. If and only if, if and only if. We have here that this homomorphism T is going from G, but it is actually going to the G, L, and R orthogonal matrices. That means simply that for every G belonging to G, T, G is an orthogonal Operator. Operator. So, maybe we need also a few more definitions. So, let me see. I just simply list them up, down, without writing definitions, and maybe write it down. So, we also introduce. introduce the following concepts. So first, two G representations and call it like this, V1 and V2 are 
set to be equivalent if there exists a G equivalent linear isomorphism A A from V1 onto V2 and B a subspace and put it like this, invariant, a G invariant, G invariant, still, invariant, and a G invariant subspace V0 of a G representation V is called G sub representation. This is called G sub representation. And finally, let's make add one more definition. This will be C. A, sorry, not O. C a G representation V is called irreducible. if it doesn't contain any proper sub-representation. Namely, namely, for example, if V0, so that means if Z0 is a sub-representation, this is sub-representation of V, then this would, would imply that V0 is either zero representation, this is called zero representation, or or v0 is exactly v0 so it's not it's nothing in between so this is this is definition of irreducible irreducible representation maybe it's a good moment to to formulate a one theorem which will show you that actually we'll be talking only about uh, orthogonal representations, but this is, we are not really restricting uh, ourselves to any kind of the special case, because the next theorem will just simply tell us that every G representation is equivalent to an orthogonal representation. So let me formulate this, re this results theorem. Theorem, any G representation V is equivalent to 
in orthogonal G representation. Okay, let's start. Let's do the proof. So as we said, so assume that V equals R N. So equip with this with the no, with a, it is a Euclidean space again. This is Euclidean space. Is a G representation. This is a G representation. So, what does it mean? That means we have here, a, a, let's write it down, V and W, two vectors, right? And we have inner product. So, this inner product is K is equal 1 to N, and those are the coordinates of the vectors. So, V is equal to V1, Vn, and W is equal to W1, Wn. So that's the inner product. So we have this inner product, and now what I can do, I can define another inner product. So let me do it like this. So consider. Consider the following. By linear form, on V times V, and this form is defined for vector V and W belonging to V, so we just put here, this is my by linear form, that one, by the definition, and I am using here the notion of the Li sorry of the of the of the of the har measure on the group g because this is a lee compact Lee group so such a har measure exists and is unique and i define that one just simply take h times v take h times w and then put here d mu that's the har measure with respect to h and integrate it so that's a well-defined integral, and you can easily verify one can easily verify that we have the property. So the first property is that this one so is a bilinear force, it's a non-degenerate. symmetric by linear form positively defined positively also sorry what so let's say maybe positively defined write it down maybe instead of non degenerate positively is po sorry positively defined by linear so many symmetric 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 by linear form that means it is so, it is an inner product So this is an inner product on V So that's the first one, so put it A and B What do I have here? That for every, if I take G, V, G, W zero is going to be the same as v w zero so 
this is for every g belonging to g and for every vw belonging to or to to v and in addition and in addition c actually we also have that gv w zero is actually equal v and this one is g minus one v zero for every g belonging to g and for every v w belonging to v let me prove let me prove one of them indeed start with the first one for with the sorry with the g so g v g w w zero is equal to i take here g and i apply the definition so this is h g v and this one is equal h g w this is d mu h I change the variable, this will be equal to, uh, sorry, h prime is equal h g, and by invariance of this in integral, we obtain that this one is equal to the same as h prime v h prime w d mu h prime which is actually v and this is w similarly similarly one can check the second one so one can check the second one namely in such a case let me write it down maybe okay check second one as well so this means g v g w is equal and I, let me write it down this will be g and what do i have here i have here h g v and this one is h w and that one is d mu h so we change the variable so a the same h one is equal h g so h is equal h prime and that one is g minus one yes so this integral becomes g and this will be h prime and that will be v and this will be h prime g minus one w d mu h prime and that gives us this is of course zero that, of course, means this is g minus 1, w, 0. So, then, notice that if we choose an orthonormal with respect to this new inner product basis in V we obtain that with respect to this basis with respect to this basis The operators TG that goes from V to V is represented by an orthonormal matrix, so is so orthogonal matrix is orthogonal. So that means it's orthogonal. So now, of course, if you look now at the representation V together with the original Euclidean norm and then if you take this representation with the new norm associated with the new inner product and take as A 
equals to identity. This is my equivariant oper operator, uh, op linear operator. That's our equivariance. This is clearly, this is clearly the, the, it shows you that that new representation, that means in this case, V equipped with this new norm, which is actually the norm and, and the inner product, which are invariant with respect to the group action, is actually giving you here the matrix representations of this of this action by linear by, by orthogonal matrices by orthogonal matrices so this is the yeah this is the case so now of course it is much more convenient to talk about the orthogonal orthogonal representations so we know that every representation can be let's say equipped with uh, such a such a new inner product that it will make it uh, that will it will make it uh, orthogonal so we will be talking about the orthogonal representations only and why this is uh, nicer to talk about such a representation let's see let's see one of the simple consequences of the orthogonality is the following which are expressed in the remark so let me Write it again. This is remark. And if V is an orthogonal G representation, and V zero, so this is subset of V is a G sub representation then the orthogonal complement to V0 is also a G sub is G sub representation. And that follows immediately from the fact that, that TG, so indeed, TG is an orthogonal operator, so it maps ortho, orthogonal, orthogonal subspaces on or orthogonal subspaces. So in such a case, in such a case that means that, that T G of V hmm, is orthogonal to V0 and this implies that T G of V0 is exactly equal to V0 perpendicular. So that, that's it. Okay. And another remark is exactly talk with, let's let's talk about the symmetries and representations. Actually it is also natural from the point of view of applications. If you would like to look at the group actions as a kind of a symmetries of a certain objects. So this will give us an idea that this symmetries can be represented by orthogonal operators. So let me write it down, another remark, and maybe formulate it like this. So suppose, suppose K contained in Rn is a rigid body it's a rigid body so okay that's not a mathematical term so for to be let's say more so maybe in Rn to be more precise like from mathematical point of view that would mean that would mean that K is a compact set, non-empty.
and descent. So then, by a symmetry, by a symmetry of k, we understand an isometry. Not clear. Isometry A that goes from V, mm, that's my V, this is my V just for simplification here, from V to V, so this is my Rn, I just call it V, and isometry V to V, so means what is isometry? Isometry preserves the distance between the vectors. Isometry preserves the distance between the vectors such that a of k is equal to k. Of course, notice that any isometry a can be represented S. And look, this would be like that. So A is equal, so you have here certain, call it like this, uh, maybe put it like this. A of V is equal to certain vector, fixed vector V0 plus TV, where T is an orthogonal linear operator. Indeed, this is a simple, simple observation. If, for example, if you choose, if you choose, let's say you can always represent this operator A, so you have to understand that if you choose, uh, uh, if you choose this vector A of zero is equal exactly this V zero, so you can say that you can change the variable, variable this, let's say the coordinate system, coordinate system in such a way that V0 is the origin, then you will get here that, that if you have your isometry, so you, in a certain way, if you have an isometry, if T from V to V is isometry such that t of zero because we change here the the origin on the other side you see we change the origin the position of origin sorry we change the position so we have t of zero and t t is an isometry satisfying 10 of course it also preserves the angles why? Because if something preserves the length, so clearly if you take a triangle, so it will preserve the angles in this triangle. And if it preserves the angles in the triangle, then of course that means that it preserves the angles between the vectors. And if something preserves the angles between the vectors, it is also, pre it is also preserving the inner product, means simply that we satisfy that for the inner product TV, TV, T, W is equal this one. And then you can easily, and you can easily deduct from this equality that T must be a linear and it must be also orthogonal operator. So preserves the angles. And that means simply it can, it, pre, it takes the linearly dependent vectors into the same linear combination of the vectors, linear combination of the vectors, by preservation of angles between the vectors. So, once we have it, so what can we do? So in such a case, we can define the symmetry group, the symmetry group,
of k. So let's simply write it, write it down like this. Symmetry group of k, so what it is? This is the set of all isometries. So this is the set of all isometries. So put it like this. This is T. Okay, call it A. As we say, A from V to V, such that A isometry and then B A of K is equal to K. So notice that GK is a group. This is definitely a group. This is definitely a group. But now, I have V that is arbitrary, a Euclidean space, so take center of mass. Take center of mass of K, say the vector V0, doesn't need to be in, 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 in K, say the center of mass is zero, and since any symmetry of the, of, the, of, the, of the body K has to take the center of mass into itself, and since for every G belonging to GK, sorry, not G, this is A belonging to the GK, a of v0 is equal to 0 by choosing choosing the origin of v at the point v0 and we keep the same in the keep the same or ortho, uh, orthogonality con conditions so that means by choosing this origin at 0 we obtain that for every A belonging to the GK, with respect to the orthonormal basis in, 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 in V, this GK is actually a subgroup. So this is a subgroup, put it like this, subgroup or orthogonal group. Yeah, orthogonal. And now, one can easily notice that the group GK is closed. Why? Why it is closed? By compactness. By compactness of K. That's another nice uh, as a assignment problem, prove that GK is closed. So that means show that indeed, show that if A N belongs to G belongs to the GK and A N converges to A can how it converges uniformly so uniformly on this okay so, so converges to that one 10 so this is in o n 10 a belongs to the gk so this is in in this in this one so it's the matrix so that means basically the a n norm of a is going to zero, then that one belongs here. Check it out. Check it out. Easy. Easy. That means you need to show that A of K is equal to K. Good. Okay. So, so, GK as a closed subgroup of a Lie group is or is a compact Lie group. 
So this is a compact Lie group. So we know that actually in this case, if you have if we have a symmetry group, that must be a compact Lie group, which is a subgroup of orthogonal operators. Orthogonal operators. That's very nice. So maybe in such a case, of course, that leads us again to the to the representation. So notice that this in this case uh, V is GK representation, representation, orthogonal representation, orthogonal representation. Let's <coughs> point out what we are actually trying to do. We are interested in symmetric equation, put it like this, symmetric equations. What do I mean by symmetric equation? So put it like this. That means for a given orthogonal G representation representation V write it down, Rn, Vrn, and G equivariant must be always continuous, I don't even say it, F from V to V, we are interested in studying the symmetric properties, the properties, the symmetric, put it like this, the, maybe just simply, symmetric, symmetric properties of the equation f of x equals 0. Sometimes, for given subset where x belongs to a given subset omega so omega omega g invariant maybe write it down here omega where omega is a g in variant open bounded And this is bound. And in such a case, we will say, in such a case, we say that the equation, and I call this equation one, that one, this is the equation one is symmetric, is symmetric with the symmetries, with the symmetries G, with symmetric, with the symmetries G. So that's a symmetric equation. Okay, so we are exactly in the moment that the degree theory can, can come and help us. So what happens? So let's see. Let's see. So we have a symmetric equation. Let me recall. This is my one. This is my symmetric equation. F of x is equal to zero. So here x, I want to be in omega. So where V is G orthogonal G representation. So that's my first bullet. The second bullet, omega is contained in V is G invariant 
open bounded set and another bullet is that f from v to v is g equivalent that means we call it f of gx is equal g f of x for every g in g x in v and the Finally, f is omega admissible. f is omega admissible. So now we are interested in the solution set. We have the solution set. And let's write it down. This is my set of solutions, the set of all x's, and in this case, in omega, such that f of x is equal to zero. And we are interested, and we want to find solutions in sigma with particular orbit type. That means, let me explain, that means for a given orbit type, so this is a conjugacy class of certain Sub, uh, subgroup H belonging, okay, this is the set of all conjugacy classes such that isotropy, there is an isotropy of this group, you see here, the orbit side or orbit type exists in V, so it belongs here, so in particular, in the, we, are, we, we want to find solution in this particular solution set with the particular, with this with a particular so with a particular orbit type H type H it means it belongs here and that means in particular that if you take that one so this is going to be non-empty set so you want to show that there exists a solution with this orbit type but that one is equivalent this is equivalent to write that this mm -hmm, this set is non-empty. This set is non-empty. How to achieve it? Actually, in this moment, since we know, since we know the since we know the Brouwer degree. Since we know the Brouwer degree, and for any orbit type, maybe just simply H belonging to phi of G, for any, I should even write like this, I should write it down, for any closed subgroup of G, for any closed subgroup of G, by equivalence, by equivariance, G equivariance, G equivariance of F, we have that we have that F transforms VH into VH. And so the Brouwer degree this degree, I just simply say degree and I put here FH on omega H 
What is FH? FH is just simply F restricted to the H. It's well defined. This is Brouwer degree. So FH is clearly going from VH to VH is well defined. Is well defined. So if if in particular if we have here the degree f of h omega h is different than zero this will imply that this set here h mm -hmm, is non-empty i want to emphasize here we have a little h at the at the top and what we are interested in is the little h in the bottom so it's not the same but this remark is actually showing us already, showing us already that that kind of the, let's say, approach is actually leading to something helpful to obtain kind of an answer to the existence of the particular solutions with the particular symmetry types. Symmetry types. So then, of course, then, of course, in certain way, you can say, okay, so since this is degree already, this degree, this is the Brouwer degree, so maybe it makes sense, I put it here like this, maybe, maybe it makes, makes sense to consider as an equivalent Put it in quotations, equivariant degree. The sequence, and I put here the sequence of all these degrees, degrees f of h, omega of h, such that h is a subgroup of g. Yeah, that's a kind of a first approach, first approach. So first thing you notice is here that actually you don't need to have, you don't need to have the, this, uh, this degrees, let's say, defined for every subgroup. So one can notice, 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 put it like this, notice that if H is conjugate to H prime, then by obvious reasons, by equivariance of F, this degree of F H omega H is actually equal to the degree of F H prime omega H prime. So in such a case, so we could, we could reduce reduce our attention to representatives representatives H belonging to this particular H class. So that means one representative from each set. So that means instead of taking the previous sequence I make this sequence here like that. So this means H belongs to the phi of uh, conjugacy classes, H. So this is conjugacy classes. So I index it by the conjugacy classes. So there is, of course, a big reduction, but still this sequence is infinite. Still sequence is infinite because in the case, in the case, the group G is continuous, infinite. The set of conjugal classes of subgroups is infinite. also infinite. 
The set is also infinite. But can you look? Well, maybe we don't need we don't need all conjugacy classes. In, but in our case, observe. Let me write it down. Observe that we are interested only in the conjugacy classes H which are the orbit types which orbit types in V. Yes, because those are going to be solutions and the orbit type of solution Okay, that's what we are interested. So, that means we denote this orbit types in V like that. This is the set of all, and I put here G, and those are orbit types in V. This is that set. So, I make another restriction. Another restriction. So, we have... And this is simply this one. I have a degree. This is H and this is omega H. And now reduce it to H belongs to the phi of G V. And now this is already a finite set. This is a finite set. This sequence is finite. So, which is already good. However, if we study, if we study, and we will be discussing this, uh, this particular fact a little later, not now, just in, 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 in not too, too far in the future, let's say. I would like to have first a couple of uh, concepts explained and practice a little, and then I will do the all formal proofs. So we will show also later that, we will show it later, the sequence. We will show that in the case if H belongs to phi, and this is G, V is such that the vile group of H is infinite, then this will imply that this degree F H omega H must be zero. So that means in this sequence, the, the, this orbitize with the infinite vile group definitely will not appear. This will be all zero values, so we may ignore them. So, so in this case, so we can further reduce the this sequence. Call it, call it this sequence. This sequence. And we can write simply that this is the sequence that is like this, degree F H omega H, and this one is H belongs, and this is phi zero G V. So notice this is an integer. So, so in certain way, if you have a sequence, this is a sequence, sequence of integer numbers, integers index by, this is a sequence of integers indexed by the H belonging to, I just simply write phi zero G. And this is a finite sequence, finite sequence. So you can see, yeah, indeed, I can write this sequence. So that means instead of writing the formula 
that, sorry, I need to change it. This formula, I will write it differently. I can write it down using this expression. I write degree, maybe finite sum over h belonging to phi phi zero of g and this will be like degree f h omega h that's an integer and index it by h so it would be an element of the Bernstein ring g and here we arriving to the expression that actually we see that we can write this particular sequence of integers as the as the as an element in the Bernstein ring AG. And this would be kind of a suggestion. Is this a good definition of the degree? Is this a good definition of the degree as this particular sequence or bad one? So it is easy to verify. It is easy. That this formula, call this formula star, that this formula will have the properties, will have, and I will discuss it in details later, we'll have next class will have the properties, the properties of additivity, homotopy. Of course, you cannot, that make, makes no sense talking about the, uh, makes no sense to, to talk about the uh, normalization, but existence, existence property, it will have all these properties. It will have these properties. Actually, existence will already show you that if this degree is different than zero, one coefficient, if this, for example, coefficient, if this coefficient is non-zero, so that means if degree of f h omega h is different than zero, then this will imply that there exists an x belonging to omega h such that f of x is equal to zero. So yes, we can, we can have this existence property, existence property. But that's not really an effective formula. This is not a formula that would give you kind of a good computationally effective degree. In particular, one of the important properties is missing. If you look at the properties of of the Brouwer degree. So one of the properties which was kind of an important when especially when you were trying to move out, let's say from let's say we didn't talk about it, but when you try to move out from the case of the finite dimensional spaces to infinite dimensional spaces, this property actually is important because it provides you a, a, a tool to generalize the Brouwer equivalent degree to the so-called Lerner-Schauder, so Brouwer, Brouwer degree to the Lerner-Schauder degree. So we would like to have the same kind of the property that could be used, could be used in order to get a similar generalization in the case of the equivalent degree. So what is this property? This property is called the product formula. Product formula. Product formula. And this product formula means the following. So for the Brouwer degree, it's simply if you have here f times g, and this is put it like this omega 1 times omega 2. So this is a product map. Let me write it down nicely. So we have a product maybe like this. F1 times F2 and this one is omega 1 times omega 2. So this one is an integer and that's a product of two integers. F1 omega 1 times just regular multiplication degree 
F1 omega 2. Sorry, F2 omega 2. F2 omega. So this is the product. We would like to have the similar property. And the G degree, which would be defined degree, equivariant degree, equivariant G degree, G degree, defined by star cannot, doesn't have such a property. I, ad I advise it is computable. You can try to do it later. Maybe we will do some examples. It will be show clearly that this property cannot be satisfied. So what would be the formula? So we need to, we need to modify the definition of equivariant of Brouwer equivariant degree so in such a way maybe in such a way that first of all that our g degree of f on omega will be element of the Bernstein ring, like it, it is here. So this is an element of the Bernstein ring. You see it here. This is an element of the Bernstein ring, first thing. And, and, and since we have a Bernstein ring, we have here multiplication and G degree, maybe go down, satisfies the product maybe i go, go here g degree and here we have here f1 times f2 and this will be omega 1 times omega 2 is equal and this one is g degree of f1 omega 1 and this is times g degree f2 omega 2 and this product here this is a multiplication in burns and energy then we have a desired degree is this possible to to modify this formula in such a case and it turns yes and it turns yes and let me this slight modification makes a big difference so maybe let me formulate the statement, may, let me formulate the statement as our main theorem and then I will just simply give the definition of the degree and then, and then after that we finish this lecture and we will do all the proofs next time. So let's put it like this theorem. So let V be a, an orthogonal G representation Omega contained in V an open bounded G invariant set and F from V to V a G equivariant Omega admissible map then the numbers dh 
I do call it DHF omega indexed by H belonging to phi zero of G phi zero G G defined by the following by the following recurrence formula and this is our formula so I give give this formula nice uh, two stars I think I was using star two stars this is dh f omega is equal and now I have a big fraction so I have to put it like this. This is the degree that we were talking about. This is F H omega H and we will be modifying degree. I will subtract here and this is all case larger strictly than H and then we have here D K and this will be F and that one is omega. Then I have here the well-known number N and this is H K and then we have here Y group of K, a number of elements. So here everything belongs to the, to the proper. So this here, you have here Y group of H. Then these numbers are, and I in, emphasize it, integers, 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 and only finitely many of them integers only finitely many are different than zero just to make sure that we understand there are only finitely many of them mm -hmm. so we can define an element in the Bernstein ring AG given by this formula. This element I call the G deg. This is F omega and this is exactly the set of all H belonging to phi zero of G and this is my DH and this is F omega times h so that's this orbital so this is an element of it which we will call Brouwer not nice Brouwer G equivalent maybe write it in red that's my main Brower G equivalent degree of F in omega. It's a very uh, yeah. So regarding the proof, as I said, no proof today. So proof will be done later. There is a need to develop certain techniques in order to carry on this proof. And we will also prove later that this, let's say like this, uh, we will prove later that this definition provides us with the property of product for this particular degree. That means we will also prove that this G degree or G, Brouwer G equivalent degree satisfies the product property.
satisfies the product property, which is kind of the, let's say, fundamental feature for the G-equivariant degree. Especially, you will see later, when it will come to the calculations of the, concrete calculations of this degree, especially the idea of using the G degree will be always in a similar way connected to the problems that allow linearization, local linearization. So we will try to show how the degree actually can be computed for this, for this degree. Thank you for today. So I, I finish it. So this is going to be done later. Thank you. And I will talk to you soon.